So in your own work, you've, you've had a study that focuses on particular states and that have looked at whether these political configurations could be sustainable in some way or other. Could you just talk a little bit about how that started and where it led you? Right. Um, had a, a conference where David Orr from Oberlin was speaking and uh, telling us that he had the students in his sustainability class uh, design a new agricultural system so that they could feed the people in the immediate area a balanced diet. Okay. And I came back and, and told my class about it and uh, a graduate student, Chris Peters, said this sounds like a thesis research problem. Would that be good for me to work on? So we got funding and looked at New York State. What would our agricultural landscape look like if we fed everybody a balanced diet from what we could produce within the state? using sustainable methods. And um, it turned out that we could feed Buffalo with about a million people, Syracuse, Rochester, Albany, with uh, a local food system, bringing all the food they needed uh, from within 50 miles. 50 miles, wow. Okay. Some, something less than that. Then we threw in New York City, and the whole thing blew up. We could only feed about 20% of the people in, in New York State. So we then went for uh, more funding to do the 48 adjacent states. Kellogg Foundation supported us. Uh, they said, though, that they wanted us to do Michigan and New Mexico and Mississippi first because Michigan, well, well Kellogg's interested in feeding children. Uh, and Michigan has Detroit with the great inner city poverty. Uh, New Mexico has the Indian reservations and the food problems associated with that, finding local food systems for them, and Mississippi has a lot of rural poverty. So we did those states first. Okay. And so is that funding continuing and you're continuing that, that to do more states? That project is so. finished. We're still writing okay. uh, papers. Uh, we've not figured out how to feed New York City. Right. But cities like New York City, uh, Los Angeles, Mexico City, Tokyo, without a large agricultural area around them, are going to have a, uh, a different kind of food system. It won't be local. So even when you include Connecticut and New Jersey, you don't get a local food system? That's right. So the work is ongoing. What are some of the results that you have? When we did um, New York State, it was very surprising to people who are ecologically oriented and believe that the only way to, to feed the, a lot of people is with an, uh, a plant-based system. And what we found with our agricultural landscape, we fed the most people by including some meat in the diet. Mm -hmm. And the reason is we have so much land that the only way we can use it sustainability, sustainably is to put it in forages which are grazed by dairy cows and beef cattle and, and, and ruminant animals. And land. so we actually could use more acres huh. okay. with a diet that in, included uh, some animal agriculture. This is land that you couldn't really plow because it's on hills or That's something. That's right. Like that. It can, cannot be plowed. We cannot grow wheat and other food crops on that land huh. or tomatoes, you know, vegetables. Um, when we went to Michigan, it was a balance. They have so much agricultural land that this didn't become an issue. They could just feed themselves mm -hmm. uh, a balanced uh, diet with sustainable agriculture for the whole state. Uh, New Mexico was a, a big surprise because it has so much land that you can't plow, mm -hmm. that you can't use to grow vegetables or fruit or, or cereal crops, a lot of cattle. And what we found out there is that every cow in the state decreased the number of people that you could feed off that land. Another surprise. And what was going on here is those cows need winter feed. Uh -huh. They have a winter down there, and the winter feed comes off irrigated land. Mm -hmm. So every cow diverts land from irrigated, potentially high food producing agriculture to produce hay to keep that cow in the winter. And in general, you have to, you're, you have to bring in water to keep cattle going, right? That's Quite right. a bit. So for New Mexico, that's just a bad, in a way, it shouldn't be a ranching place, right? I don't want to go that far. 
<laughs> in, 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 saying, in saying that. But it, what we're interested, how many people can you feed yeah. with a sustainable method of, of cropping? And um, they have uh, too many cows if they're going to maximize their population. Right yeah. now, they don't have that problem. But what's interesting here is that we often get <clears throat> from activists as well as um, scientists kind of one-size-fits-all answers. But what you are suggesting is that for different regions with different infrastructures and natural resources, some places it's actually good to add some cattle in terms of sustainability. Other places, not so good. That's right. Uh, that's an interesting result. Mm -hmm.